Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, today, we're hopefully going to have uh, a great guest on uh, today. Let me see if uh, I can get him on here. Let's see. Uh, our guest today will be Corinne Sutton, uh, multi-time pro uh, natural vegan bodybuilder. Uh, very accomplished. Um, Corinne's been with us uh, with Team Clean Machine for many, many years. Uh, so hopefully we can get him on here. May have a little bit of trouble logging in. Let me see if I can can uh, see if I can see what's going on here. So what we're going to be talking about, if we get Corinne on here, uh, what we're going to be talking about is getting fit and staying fit. Um, it was an interesting study that uh, just came out uh, recently that showed when people set goals and then actually immediately start to work on those goals, they had the best, longest uh, lasting uh workouts and stayed with it more consistently but not only that obviously got better results so making really clear defined goals what are your goals do you want to just focus on losing weight do you want to uh focus on uh, building more muscle do you want a combination of that do you want more of a fit body do you want to make sure you're staying lean do you want to gain a lot and then lose some and then go on stage. Do you want to compete? What are your goals? Are you just looking for overall cardio health? Get get your weight down, get your blood pressure down, get your uh, diabetes under control through proper uh, plant-based diet and exercise. Um, let's see. Um, so, you know, all of these things, if you make clear goals, and then go right to work on getting those goals and track your progress. It's very important. And um, uh, I think that's one of the things that Corinne does extremely well. And he is uh, not only a pro athlete, but he goes out there and he helps train other people how to get to their goals, meet their goals, and stay on their goals. And that's more important, especially for your overall health. So that's one of the things that hopefully we'll be talking about if we can get him on here. Let's see if he's responded. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we'll have to reschedule Corinne for a, uh, a different time. Maybe I have a little trouble getting logged in so sorry about that um we'll be back again next week and oh there he is <laughs> okay so there he is <laughs> hey, what's up man how you doing good yourself good 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 yeah i was just telling everybody about getting fit and staying fit and a new study that showed that when people set goals and they stick and they start them immediately they have a lot more success over a longer period of time. And I know that's something that you work with your clients on is setting real concrete goals. Like, do you wanna just lose weight? Are you looking to get overall better health? Or are you looking to get in competition shape? So mm -hmm. being very specific, very clear about what your goals are and, and then going, and going uh, immediately, putting that into practice with trackable, measurable results. Because I think it's the results when they start getting the feedback, when they start seeing the progress that gets them excited, keeps them engaged. Because otherwise, if you just go to the gym and you're just weighing yourself, weight cannot change a lot. You could be dropping body fat and gaining muscle at the same time 
and your weight not change at all. So if you're just looking at the scale, you're not getting the real picture of what's the progress that's happening in your body. So, so talk about that and how you help people see the different advantages. Uh, so, so, um, when, it, when it comes to my, to my business and, and when people come up to me first, we have to uh, get a goal because that's, that's the main, that's like the, that's the big thing right there. Um, I've turned people away when they told me that they didn't have a goal because I, I, would, I and I, would, it wasn't, and it's not like I just blew them off. I, I'd be like, I really try to dig real deep and I'm like, like, do you have any ambitions or anything you're trying to do? And if they're just like, uh, you know, I don't have a goal. Well, then you're not really ready to do anything new if you don't have a goal because there's no purpose because um, the failure rate of doing, especially when it comes to health and fitness is going to be very high, you know, but if you have a particular goal, like, um, Hey, I want to lose fat. Like this is what I majority get all the time. Um, then I ask a little bit deeper, like, well, how much fat are you trying to lose? Do you know how much fat you want to lose? You know? And, and then the deeper we go within those goals and the more specific we get, then the more, confident you're going to be when you do join the program you know obviously there within within that um uh, i guess you can call it within that consultation that we have um there's just a back and forth between me and that client because we're just trying to see if we're a good fit for each other and if if the program is something uh that is is going to be great for that individual if it's going to work for that individual but overall it's about making sure that um the terms between and the terms and the agreement that we both create um we're actually going to accomplish them because i'm all about accomplishing goals you know it's i don't like wasting people time and lying to them and you know just to be your friend like because there's a lot of coaches out there that does that as well um, I don't like just wasting people's time and just be friendly for no reason. And I don't see no results. Like if you need results, I'm going to push you. Like we could be friends, whatever. But the primary goal at the end of the day is I want to do whatever it takes to get you to those goals. As fast Account as Accountability, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. And you were in the service. Thank you for your service. Uh, mm -hmm. You're multi-service, actually. And I'm sure you learned a, a good bit of discipline and accountability there. Um, but that's, that's really one of the things that I think if you're really looking to get results, because, you know, everybody sees that guy or girl walking down the beach, right? And says, wow, I wish I had a body like that. And that, OK, wishing is one thing. If you want that, get a genie in a bottle. <laughs> but if you want to actually accomplish that, it takes work. It takes mm -hmm. discipline. It takes consistency. So my three guidelines are consistency, intensity, training with intensity, and uh, nutrient density, which is you got to feed this thing the proper nutrition. You can bust your butt in the gym. And if your macros aren't right, if your nutrients, micros aren't right, your micronutrients and your macronutrients aren't right, your body can't do its thing. Your body is only as good as what you put in it and what you ask it to do. Now, the asking it to do part is exercise. And the harder you train, the stronger a message you are telling your body, let's get up and change. But you got to give the body if you are asking it to do more you got to give it more and and that's where i think nutrition can play a big role how do you as being a plant-based uh athletic coach how do you address that situation when you talk to people because definitely there's much higher nutrition in plants than there are in most of the animal products so i know a lot of people probably come to you from a animal-based diet and then how do you transition them to a plant-based diet uh well usually usually uh, a lot of people that's coming towards me um they're they're either new vegans so um they're 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 already in the process of transitioning it's not like they're coming to me like i just want to be vegan like uh most most of them is already on that path like maybe they're eating fish still or chicken or whatever, but they're, they're already willing to drop it. 
you know, uh, I don't get a lot of people who's super fresh. Like they're just like, I'm eating, still eating animal products. Now I just want to be vegan. I get mostly people that's already attempted on their own. They probably watch a, a video or something like that, you know, or they, they've been following me for a while and started doing some of my tips or something like that. Um, that's how it usually works. But when, when someone does come to me, um, you know, the transition is, is, it's not really anything I really have to say a lot just because they, they already, the, the lot of people that's already coming to me already trust me just because they already seen my content and a lot of things that I share and they seen that I've been doing it for a very long time as well. So I, I guess that a lot of people that I'm getting, it doesn't really require a lot of talking they're they're already coming to me to learn now when someone's like want to learn more about nutrition and stuff like that i mean that's i teach them that through my classes and stuff like that and you know i have classes every week as well um i saw most of the time i, I do them on igtv live but they are recorded for my students so they can always watch them but uh we talk about different subjects mostly uh about mindset uh, productivity, nutrition, uh, stuff like that, because it all has to revolve around health and wellness overall to have sustainable results. So, so that's that's uh, that's where it's coming from from my end, really. So it's really it's not a lot I have to say up front, you know. What are some of the biggest uh, questions or concerns or struggles that people have coming to you? Um, because, you know, a lot of people have been out there, have tried other coaches and have not gotten the results that they're looking for. What do you feel are the big difference makers um, for people? What are the big challenges and hurdles that they're struggling with when, you know, trying to do it all on their own and not figuring it out? Um, I know getting their nutrition dialed in because, look, you can go work out in the gym really hard. And if you're overeating and if you're eating crappy food, your body's just not going to respond the same way. It's not. And it's not going to show. Or you can build muscle. But look, if you've got a layer of, you know, 15, 20 pounds of fat uh, on you, then, you know, that's that's not going to show any abs. You know, and a lot of people, the very first thing they want when they come to me, and I'm sure to you, is I want a six pack. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, OK, well, you have to be willing to do the diet part. Right. Not just the workout part. Right. Yeah. So um, when it comes down to that, most people, what I do is they're, they're really looking for uh, food combinations, like just creating new recipes. Uh, that's that's one big thing, uh, because uh, a lot a lot of people go to restaurants, but. Uh, people when they when people are eating out they're not seeing the results and they know like they they pretty much know like i should be cooking at home you know like a lot of people already know this uh they just don't want to admit to it so it's just like they know like they should be cooking mo mostly at home because eating out all the time isn't good it tastes good but they know it's not good overall right and then the second thing is uh learning just re regular recipes like quick recipes because when people buy these uh, cookbooks from people, then it's like like all these cook all these ingredients takes at least forty five minutes to an hour to make, you know, mm -hmm. or it's complicated or has all these weird ingredients that you can't find. You have to go to like three different stores just to find like to get all the recipes and or the ingredients for one particular dish. So it's like uh, that's that's another thing. So. What I do is I, I teach people how to meal prep, but not like your typical bodybuilding meal prep, like a meal prep for that has like normal foods that's healthy. And I make sure that the foods that are meal prepped is not just super well hyper focused on uh, just following macros, but also from a wellness aspect where you're getting your vitamins and minerals and also enough fiber. A lot, a lot of coaches don't really focus on a lot of those things. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them mostly focus on the macros, and and they they try to push that as a message 
because that you can have the, you can uh, eat whatever you want and have the freedom, which which you can, you know, but it's not something that's healthy long term. You might get results, you know. I mean, I've seen people, you know, get ripped just eating pizza and junk food, and, and they they and drinking beer all the time, and they fall the macros to the T. But is that something that when it comes to the quality of their body, is that something that's going right. to be sustainable long term? Probably not. You know, so they look good from the outside. They could be ripped and everything, but the inside could be really jacked up. So that's what I try to teach my students. So once they have a better understanding of not just following the macros, but also paying attention to the vitamins and minerals, because one of the things that happens to vegans they get malnourished, right? That's like the term people say. And you can be malnourished on any diet, really. But when you're on a plant-based diet, you really want to make sure you're getting all your vitamins and minerals, which require eating a lot of vegetables. And, and that's what I try to teach people. So once they want to eat whatever they want and they kind of master like counting macros and pay attention to all those things, when it comes to eating out or getting junk food and stuff like that, People have a better uh, decision when it comes to choosing foods. It's going to come not just from a place of just of hunger and what you're craving, but also from a place where it's more uh, analytical, where you're like, you know, but am I getting enough nutrients? Did I hit my nutrients today? Should I have a pizza or should I have like maybe a Buddha bowl? You know, like because when you're keeping track of all that stuff, that's what's going to really determine the choices of the foods. So I'm just bringing more awareness when it comes to eating and that's it. Yeah. And I think, you know, being married to a, a, a great uh, vegan cook is, <laughs> is helpful for me, but mm -hmm. um, uh, who prepares all our meals at home, all our dinner meals. And we go out every once in a while, but even when we go out, we pick healthier uh, vegan restaurants. And uh, mm -hmm. so, but I mean, to some degree, you can be flexible with your diet, having occasional fun foods, um, and then have the mainstay of your diet be the whole food plant-based and supplement where you're missing nutrients or, or to boost nutrient um, capacity. You know, that's when I was clean, uh, creating clean green protein. I was really excited because most people use a protein that's all it is, is isolated protein. It's just protein. That's one nutrient. Now, when you eat whole foods, you're getting all the nutrients, all the micronutrients, all the fiber, all the omegas, all, all the other stuff that goes into really what builds muscle, not just protein. That's like saying, okay, I'm going to give you the bricks. You build a house with it. Nothing mm -hmm. else, no mortar, no electricity, no plumbing, just bricks. And that's what you're saying when here's your protein, go build muscle. You're telling your body, well, okay, you gave me the building blocks, but nothing else. You know, no doors, no windows, no no plumbing, no shower, no bathroom, nothing. It's just bricks. Bricks does not make a house. Um, and, and protein does not make a fit body. You have to have all the rest of the nutrition in order to feed that. And that's why I was so excited about clean green protein, because we're using the whole plant. So you're getting all the micronutrients, all the fiber, all the polyphenols, all the chlorophyll, all of the whole food nutrition that you expect to get from it but without all those calories. Cause I know I was like, Oh my God, you know, getting up to 100, 150 grams of protein a day for being on competition state for my weight. I was like, okay, this looks great, but I am eating a ton of food. <laughs> and not only was it starting to get me a little food tired, uh, exhausted, just eating all the time. Um, but, uh, but it also was adding hidden calories like tofu. Tofu is a great source of protein, but it's also a really high source of fat. Mm -hmm. And if you make that a mainstay part of it, you're adding a lot of fat calories and that can tip your macros to the point where, wait a minute, I'm not getting enough of the, the greens and the fruits and stuff like that in there with have all the high nutrient density in it. So, Talk about that balance. I know you've created a book about that, right? And, um, and yeah. to, to help people do that. And like you said, do it quicker and easier so they don't say, ah, I give up. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. I created a book 
like I said, it, it's a cookbook and it's called uh, Macro Mastery because uh, I've, I've noticed that as well when it came to cookbooks. All the recipes were very complicated. It would take a long time to make it. And and truthfully, when I even when I would ask my clients, I would ask friends, family, I mean, I even did polls. Like people would say that they only make one or two recipes, you know, uh, out of that cookbook if they had one, right? Um, and and they just people just want things that's simple. And I and I kind of and the people I deal with, they they want more um they want simplicity, you know. So what I did was I created this book here called Macro Mastery. And uh, in Macro Mastery, it has over 70 plus fast meal prep prep hacks. And uh, this is really good because within the book, it shows you like the macros for all the all the foods, for all the foods, the recipes. And then um, and then also at the same time, if because if let's because I know there might be some people who don't even know what macros are and calories and all that stuff. So like if you want to know what it is, then it, I actually teach you what macros are. You know, I teach you what macros are. I tell you like the importance of them. And then I even help you within the book, show you how to create them, you know, like how to make your own macros. Okay. So it can fit to for whatever goals you're trying to do. So uh, that's the point of the book. So when you do the math and you figure out your own calories, your own macros, and you go ahead and break it down, and it's nothing that everything I'm showing you in this book is literally what I do with my own students. So it's, it's no, there's no secrets, you know, it's no tricks. Um, but once, once you have the book and you do the math and you got everything down, then you have all the recipes because all the recipes that we created are recipes that we put inside people's meal plans. So the only difference is that let's say you decided to work with me personally, we we do all the work for you. You know, you don't have to crunch any numbers, you don't have to figure out the food combinations and how to make them fit because every single food item has to be measured out for your calories and macros. You know, and that might take a while if you're doing it on your own. But the information is all in here. You know, you just have to take some little time, to, some little uh, due diligence to study. Yeah. And uh, and that's it. And you got it. And then you just have the recipes. You try to pick out your favorite ones and try to combine them together where it makes sense. And then you're good to go. You know. So to explain that macros, macros is short for macronutrients. There are four macronutrients, protein, carbs, fat and fiber. Fiber is uh, still not considered a macronutrient by some, but uh, now we know how important um, fiber is to our gut health and that it creates metabolites. We're now seeing that uh, that impact of fiber on our gut is vital to our overall health. So I think soon uh, fiber will be generally and broadly accepted as the fourth macronutrient. So you've got those four macronutrients and then you have your total calories. Now, you want to get your fats, your level of fats to a place where you're uh, getting enough of fats, especially the important fats, the essential fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids called omega-3s and omega-6. These are essential. Our body needs them. They're required. Um, so getting those those good fats in, you want to make sure you're maintaining that level. You want to make sure you're pertaining, getting enough of the protein to meet your uh, exercise and fitness goals. But you also want to get enough carbohydrates to create satiety, uh, to boost your um, uh, metabolism, to keep your metabolism firing. Because if you get too low on carbohydrates, your body can actually slow down the metabolism and slow down your results of fat burning in the gym. So all of these four things need to be tied together. Now, that can seem a little complicated for people. Like, okay, what's my ratios? And to be honest, they're different ratios for every different person, depending on what your favorite foods are, depending on what your goals are, uh, depending on um, if you have specific intolerances or things like this. So 
it's important to work with somebody like Corinne who's done this and got it down to a science <laughs> so that he can look exactly perfect every time he steps on stage because he knows exactly how his body is going to respond to those. But he works with you to find out the ma right macros for you because everybody has different metabolism, different gender, different starting body weight, um, all these different variables that you do if you're taking medications, if you have a disease state to start out with. All of these things have to be taken into context when you start out. So talk about that a little bit and, and how you get to someone's ideal macros and adjust it on the fly as you go, as you see results happening or results slowing. Uh, I mean, you, you pretty much kind of answered it. You know, it's uh, it, it's like you said, like every every calorie and macro is built for different people. So, for example, you know, you might might have heard like certain coaches promote like a low carb diet, fat carb, uh, not fat carb, high carb diet, um, low fat, high fat, high protein, like vegan keto, like all these things. Uh, the reality is this, I mean, first of all, you pick first, you want to pick something that you feel that is going to be sustainable, you know? So when it comes to like low carb, high carb, like, is that sustainable for your lifestyle? You know, that's number one, because any type of diet, even vegan keto or something like that can work. But you want to pick something that is going to be part of your lifestyle because that's what's going to give you sustainable results. So if you went vegan keto and you lost about a lot of weight and then you got ripped and then you're like, all right, well, now I'm going to do this high carb diet. Like more likely, you know, you might end up gaining all the weight back. You know, okay, your body is used to functioning one way and more in ketosis. And now you're just slamming a bunch of carbs like just like that. Right. So how I usually do it is I just focus on like putting people more in a caloric deficit. So if they're if they're lose if they're if you're trying to lose body fat, I'll put you into a caloric deficit, meaning that you have to burn more calories than what you're consuming. OK, that's it. That's that's the easy. It's the simplest way I could uh, say it. Once you lose all the body fat and stuff like that, and depending on, on your activity levels, your goals, that will determine if your carbs are higher, if your carbs are lower. Your it, it really would determine the whole uh, partition of how your macros are built. Because when you're making something that's uh, custom, you know, you it's like Jeff said, it's like it depends on your goals, the foods you like, stuff like that. You know, so like if you're someone who doesn't like a lot of rice and beans and stuff like that, you know, maybe maybe a lower carb carb carbohydrate diet might be better because you can you probably like more vegetables. You know, maybe you're just a vegetable person and you want to eat things more of a, uh, a like a real whole food food state, you know, uh, because there's some people like that. They, they don't do like nightshade foods or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like. So everything will determine. I'm just make, like just saying things, just uh, making examples, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, when you get to your goal, then you have to slowly uh, do something called like a reverse diet, where you're slowly adding more calories back into your lifestyle, right? Because when you have more calories, this is going to give you more options to eat whatever you want, because and when I say eat whatever you want, you know, because a lot of people do like their junk foods. They like their pizzas and their hamburgers and all that stuff. They want they like Thanksgiving and eating a bunch of food. Right. But wouldn't it be great to be able to have all that food at any choice, any time at the will of, of what you want to do without gaining the weight back? Of course. You know, so like you don't want to be you don't want to have that relationship with the type of food where you're a purist and you're just become like, I'm never eating chocolate cake ever again. I'm just going to stick on a whole foods plant-based diet. You know, like me, unless that's something you really choose, you know, you want to do more power to you and go ahead and do it. But like, you don't want to create a fear right. of, of that. You know, you don't want to just be on a whole foods plant-based diet because you you're scared 
of eating cake and that scared that fear is coming from a source of because you're afraid you're going to get fat again you know like you don't or get addicted to cake again like so this is why we do this reverse diet and i'm gonna be honest the reverse diet is just as important as the deficit because this because i've had people who would leave and like once they lost all the weight and when i tell them you need to stick with me so i can work on the reverse diet it's not over you're just ha- you just made it to the halfway mark right. yeah because people are already at they think they're at the finish line because their primary goal was the weight loss right. i'm like yeah but you can't live on a deficit the right. goal is to yeah the weight loss but also give you the freedom to eat what you want and so i need to work with you so to slowly add in these calories because the the thing with the macros even with the macro mastery book i even tell people when about this book i tell them like you could do it but remember you need to make your adjustments too don't make just one one uh calorie like you know you create your macros and then think that's going to be forever unless you're doing it for maintenance like you're like you're happy where you are so if you're doing it for maintenance, then yeah, then you can do one thing and do forever. You could probably do it for like a good six months to a year and sw- and change it out like very like very uh, small, you know, like don't have to do it so much, you know. You do it like that for maintenance. But if you're someone who has progressive goals, then you want to be changing them out at least every 30 days, you know, yeah. depending where you're going. If you're going down the ladder, up the ladder, whatever the case can be, you want to be changing them pretty frequently, at least at least once a month. Yeah. Right. And I and I want uh, to know that people, it's it's not all just about calorie count. It's about the type of calorie. Because you can take a food that is higher in calories, uh, like fruit, for instance. And uh, depending on what's in that fruit, what comes with that fruit, how much fiber does it have? How much pectin does it have? How much, uh, how high is it in polyphenols? These things affect your blood sugar. So you can have the exact same amount of white sugar, say three grams of white sugar, right? White table sugar, and you put it in your bloodstream and it spikes your insulin way up and it stores as fat because the body can't process that amount of sugar that fast. Now, when you take the exact amount of three grams of sugar in an apple, an apple has polyphenols in it that slow that sugar into the bloodstream and then get into the bloodstream and help that sugar go to the right places and not be stored as fat. Exact same amount of calories, exact same amount of sugar, big difference in results. And that's where people are getting into trouble thinking, oh, I'm eating this amount of calories, but it's in vegan donuts. (laughs) <laughs> that's the same as this amount of calories from a salad. No, it is not. <laughs> they do not behave the same way in your body. They change your microbiome and change the way your body processes that energy uh, and whether storing it as fat or actually causing trouble like degradation to your arteries and, and things like this. So there's a big difference between calories. So I know you help steer people to getting those calories from nutrient dense foods. Like I do blueberries, strawberries, cherries, raspberries in my smoothie with clean green protein every single morning. And that is amazing. It gives me sustained energy, lots of antioxidants, lots of polyphenols, cleaning my system and and all those greens with all that vitamin k all that beta carotene all that high fiber omega-3s all that nutrition to start my day so my engine is running well when i get into that gym i am tearing it up and there's a big difference in that and and nutrition is so key that's why obviously i created clean machine to to try to get people focused on the nutrition plant-based nutrition part of it so they can up that nutrition using plants to help them get better, easier results. You know, when I was at uh, 24 Hour Fitness, we did a study in a poll, and they said the number one reason why people dropped out of the gyms, I didn't get results fast enough. That's what I do, that's what you do, and that's what I love about what you do. 
is you show people how to get to those results sooner with the proper nutrition and the proper training and the proper macros and bringing those all together so that they get the results. Because once you get results, you get excited. You're like, all right, what's next? You know? <laughs> um, I remember when you and me and uh, Jamal Collins was, uh, was at the World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship, and that was his first competition ever. But he got a lot of support from you, a lot of great feedback. Uh, you know, I worked with him a little on nutrition. And look at him now. He's a pro. He mm -hmm. took it and ran with it. He's got a phenomenal physique. And um, But he got inspired because he got those results quicker. And that's what I'm really uh, trying to help people doing. And that's what I love about what you're doing with people and why I'm we support our team clean machine athletes all month long with 25 percent off uh use the code if you're um on uh um uh, what is your amazon code by the way if you want to tell people that too if you're shopping on amazon oh uh, i don't i don't have a uh oh it's the link right uh go yes, to uh, friend's page yeah. and you can actually click on the link for uh your discount uh for uh affiliate discount on amazon or use case KS yes, for TCM. Corinne Sutton, TCM for Team Clean Machine, and you'll get 25% all month on uh, on our website. So, well, cool, Corinne, in, in parting, what is some, the best advice you can give for people who are really looking to go from a sedentary, not so healthy lifestyle and getting in it? What should they expect? It's gonna be a little difficult. They're gonna go through some physical changes that might not be so fun, talk to them about that, what they should expect and how they can get through those. If, if they're starting with me or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you start with me and um, I mean, when it comes down to it, like if you're coming from a sedentary lifestyle, I mean, I always say, I mean, first thing you want to do is have your why, like you need to have your why and you have to have a scale, a number scale. Like you have to scale it from a one to 10, like, how bad do you want to get to these goals, right? Because the thing with my program, I always tell people the truth. I'm like, it's not easy. You know, it's definitely not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, I, I tell people the opposite <laughs> of what people want to hear. Uh, because I don't, I want you to already expect it's going to be hard. Yeah, because it is. Because the thing is, is that what plays a significant role when it comes to these type of programs is a lot of accountability and discipline like we have the coaches to help you we have the material and and you know the workout plans the meal plans i mean we have the app like we have so much things that i created to make it simple for for you um it nothing fails right it's a it's just literally a fail safe system but the problem is that sometimes life can happen and this is where the discipline really has to come into play because a lot of people will come in with nothing on their plate or in their agenda and it starts off good but then when something happens they want to go ahead and press the pause button or quit or i can't do this and blah 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 and the thing is is why i told people uh, even what i said here today it has to be a lifestyle so even when things get bad for me, I still find ways around it to get it done because it's not a goal. It's a lifestyle. It's something I need to do. And when you're trying to go within a lifestyle change, it's hard because it's stuff that you're just not accustomed to, especially doing it all the time. So don't come here thinking like it's a program where it's more of a luxury item you come here in the program like it's a school. Mm -hmm. And if you mess up, you fail. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you do what you need to do, you're going to succeed. Because if you want the speed, right? Right. With speed comes discipline. And that's what you're going to see. You know, there's a lot of students that are successful. If you don't believe me, you could check it out on my Facebook group, Facebook. You check it out on my Insta, especially on my Instagram on my website you're just going to see tons of testimonials and i tell everyone the same thing i'm, I'm very blunt i'm just like look the, if you're asking me if it's easy i'm like you're asking the wrong question 
<laughs> yeah. I tell <laughs> Don't come here for easy. Come here for results. Yeah. You're, you're coming here for results. Yeah. You're not coming here if it's easy or not. Yeah. Right. Like, because if it was easy, then like, you know, everyone will be doing it. Right? right. It's not easy, but it becomes easy once it's a lifestyle because right. it doesn't, you, it, you don't think at it as a task anymore. It's like brushing your teeth. Like when you're a kid and your mom was like, or your parents was like, brush your teeth and you're crying like, no, yeah. <laughs> because you're saying no, but your parents don't want you to have a yuck mouth. Right. You know, she don't want, they don't want you to have cavities and stuff. But then once you start doing it, do you really complain anymore about brushing your teeth? No, you just do it because it's good for, it's good dental hygiene. Right. You know, if not, your teeth's going to fall out. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's the same thing with this. You know, I tell people straight up, it's like, what I'm trying to teach you is a lifestyle. So when right. you leave the program, you have sustainable results. You're not keep, you're not bouncing around from coach to coach and program and program and workout videos and buying all these uh, workout contractions that don't work. Right. I'm trying to teach you just a lifestyle, something like you need to eat right. You need to work out consistently. And this is how you're going to keep the body that you have. If not, then don't even you're wait you're 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 wasting your money, you're wasting your wheels, you're wasting my time, and you're wasting a lot of money on other people who don't who's not teaching lifestyle. Yeah. You're just you're just giving them money. Yeah, that's all you're doing. Right. When we're born, we don't come with a user manual. <laughs> but there are people like yourself who have figured these things out and it shows you're a shining example. You know, you're, you're all your awards behind you mm -hmm. are, are proof. Uh, you know, uh, how many times uh, have you, how many first place? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've been doing it for like right. seven years, uh, bodybuilding seven years. I've been in the fitness industry for 10 years. So like what I'm telling you, I've been there, done that. I've seen them all. I've worked in all the gyms. I've seen all the little programs that people write. I, I know it. Yeah. And it's just, it's hard to hear the truth, but sometimes you need to know it. Yeah. And that's just how it is. It's just like, you need to learn lifestyle, lifestyle stuff. Yeah. And you got to put the work in. And you know, what's amazing that, that uh, Karen has been uh, competing at the NPC level. Um, so if you guys don't understand the difference between natural bodybuilding shows and NPC, which is an untested bodybuilding show, it means that they can use any of the drugs like insulin and steroids and, and growth hormone and stuff like that. Um, but he's been doing it as a natural. So being, you know, a seven year vegan, eight, seven, eight year vegan and you know, completely natural, uh, no PEDs, and then going against these guys that are doing it. He's got to work even harder. He's got to train harder. He's got to get his nutrition dialed even more because he's not having these drugs help him out. And, and that's amazing testament that he can go on stage and place in these shows against people who are using. That's incredible. And that's what he can do for you. And that's what proper nutrition, proper training, and proper guidance. You know, one of my favorite shows on television is The Prophet. <laughs> And he, what he does is invest in startups, small companies to help them grow as a business. But instead of just giving them money, he shows them how to tr get the people part right, how to get the process right, and then how to get your numbers right. And he gives them the tools to be able to grow themselves. And I think that's what we're trying to do, me with uh, nutrition and Corinne with his training and nutrition programs and even his cookbook, is give you the tools and the guidance that you can use for the rest of your life so that this is a sustainable lifestyle that you can enjoy, that you can live the healthiest you, you can live the fittest you, and you can enjoy a long life all the way to the end without the disease states, you know, mm -hmm. and that's a big difference. Well, Corinne, thank you so much for, for joining us again. Um, uh, can you uh, let people know how to get in touch with you, how to follow you on Instagram, IG, et cetera? Yeah, the best way to get in touch with me is on um, on Instagram and Facebook. Just put in uh, at Corinne Sutton. I'm mostly on uh, Instagram the most, so you could definitely check me out there and send me a DM if you need any assistance. Or you can um, check out my website, bodyhdfitness.com or email me at Corinne Sutton at bodyhdfitness.com. And you also have a Facebook group too as well. 
Uh, it's, it's private, only for my students. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, 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 Live Fit? Yeah, I mean, you you could join that group. It's a free group. Yeah, you could join that. Okay. So, um, yeah, lots of ways. Uh, type in, uh, go on Facebook and you just type in Corinne Sutton and you'll see pretty much all of his links and, and ways to get into yeah. as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Corinne. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you for all you're doing to represent not only Clean Machine. Thanks for being a great friend. And uh, thank you for all that you're doing for the animals, too. I love your posts. I love to read your. If you if you haven't, too, once you get Corinne, sign up for his newsletter. You'll learn a lot and you will laugh a lot because he has some <laughs> hilarious <laughs> newsletters. I look forward to getting his emails. I don't, I don't usually say that about somebody. Uh, some of them are so freaking hilarious. Uh, check him out. Yeah, he's got a great email list uh, of, of emails going out on a regular basis. Great tips that you can take home. Great reminders for the use. Even those of you who have been doing it for a while or even taking the stage, it's like, ah, yeah, I really need to apply that again. So good stuff. Thanks, Thanks again, Corinne. Thanks for yeah, having me. No problem. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.